Ever wondered why nobody lives in northern and western Minnesota? To answer that, we first need to delve into the history of Minnesota. Guys, welcome to Fact Finder. Let's begin the story. The story of Minnesota is a rich tapestry woven with threads of diverse cultures and historical milestones. Indigenous tribes such as the Dakota and the Anishinaabe were the original custodians of this land, living in harmony with its abundant lakes and verdant forests. Then came the Europeans, explorers and settlers who brought with them their own customs and traditions. Among them, German and Scandinavian immigrants left an indelible mark on Minnesota's cultural landscape. Their influence can still be seen today in the state's architecture, food, and even the Minnesotan accent. But the arrival of these settlers was not without conflict. The indigenous tribes were pushed out of their ancestral lands, leading to a series of treaties. One such pivotal agreement was the Treaty of Travers du Sioux in 1851. This treaty, though controversial, opened up southern Minnesota to American settlement. Just imagine the scene. Pioneers setting foot on these lands for the first time, building homes, tilling the soil, and laying down the roots of communities that would grow into the bustling towns and cities we know today. The southeastern part of the state, with its fertile valleys and proximity to the Mississippi River, became a magnet for these settlers. Over time, this region grew in population and prominence, leaving the northern and western parts sparsely inhabited. But why is that? Is it just the allure of the South, or are there other factors at play? Well, to peel back the layers of this intriguing question, we need to take a journey into Minnesota's varied landscapes, its continental climate, and its unique geographic anomalies. The history of Minnesota has shaped its population distribution, but to fully understand, let's venture into its geography. Minnesota isn't just another state, its varied landscapes tell a unique story. A rich tapestry of geographical features weaves across its expanse, each contributing to the unique character and population distribution of the state. Let's take a journey through the state's geography, starting with the Canadian Shield. This ancient rock formation, one of the oldest on the planet, stretches across the northeastern part of Minnesota. Its rugged terrain and abundant lakes make it a paradise for outdoor enthusiasts, but not so much for settlers seeking farmable land. Moving westward, we encounter the fertile valleys of the Red River and Minnesota River. These regions, blessed with rich soil and flat landscapes, attracted early settlers and continued to be the agricultural heartland of the state. The abundance of arable land in these areas supports a significant portion of Minnesota's population, primarily in small towns and rural communities. In the southeastern corner of the state, you'll find the Driftless Area. This unique region, untouched by the glaciers that shaped much of the state's landscape, boasts rolling hills, deep valleys, and limestone bluffs. Its natural beauty attracts many, but the challenging terrain has limited population growth in this area. The geographical features of Minnesota play a significant role in its population distribution. The fertile valleys of the west and south offer the perfect conditions for agriculture supporting rural communities and small towns, in contrast, the rugged terrain of the Canadian Shield and the Driftless Area, while beautiful, is less conducive to large populations. But geography is not the only factor at play here. The state's continental climate, with its cold winters and warm summers, also impacts where people choose to live. The southeastern part of the state, which enjoys milder winters compared to the rest of Minnesota, is home to about 75% of the state's population. The geography is certainly a factor, but the climate, too, plays an intriguing role in where people choose to live. The interplay of geography and climate has shaped the unique population distribution of Minnesota, a tale as varied as the state's landscapes. Minnesota's climate can be as diverse as its landscapes. This statement rings true when you consider the state's continental climate characterized by cold winters and warm summers. This climate, while challenging, supports an array of diverse ecosystems. From the boreal forests in the north to the prairies in the south, the state's climate nurtures a variety of flora and fauna, making it a haven for nature lovers. But let's talk about the winters. When we say cold, we mean really cold. It's not uncommon for temperatures to dip well below freezing, and sometimes they even hit negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now imagine trying to live in those conditions. It's challenging. And it's one of the reasons why the northern and western parts of Minnesota are sparsely populated. During the summer, the story changes. 
the weather warms up, the snow melts, and Minnesota transforms into a different world. It's during this time that the state's natural beauty truly shines. However, these warm summers are fleeting, and before you know it, the cold winter is back. This cyclical climate not only impacts the state's ecosystems, but also the distribution of its population. People tend to settle in areas where the climate is more manageable and predictable. This is why you'll find the majority of Minnesotans living in the southeastern part of the state, where the climate is somewhat milder. So we have history, geography, and climate influencing where people live. But what about the urban areas? The Twin Cities, Minneapolis, and St. Paul are the heart of Minnesota, but there's more to the story. Nestled in the southeastern part of the state, these cities have grown exponentially thanks to their strategic advantages. The Mississippi, Minnesota, and St. Croix rivers have provided an excellent transportation network, opening the area to trade and commerce. The fertile soil and abundant natural resources have also played a significant role, attracting settlers and industries alike. But let's move north to a curious little corner of Minnesota, the Northwest Angle. This geographic anomaly, a U.S. exclave, is the northernmost point of the contiguous United States, but it's only accessible by land through Canada. It's a result of historic treaties and a few map inaccuracies. The Treaty of Paris in 1783 and the Treaty of 1818 established the boundary between the U.S. and Canada, leading to the creation of the Northwest Angle. Today it's home to just a handful of people with a lower population density due to challenging geographic and climatic conditions. It's a stark contrast to the bustling Twin Cities, but it's a part of what makes Minnesota's population distribution so unique. The blend of history, geography, and climate has led to the unique population distribution we see in Minnesota today. With every corner of the state telling its own tale, the story of Minnesota is a fascinating tapestry of human adaptation and resilience. So why does nobody live in northern and western Minnesota? We've journeyed through the rich history of Minnesota, from the indigenous tribes to the influx of German and Scandinavian settlers. We've explored the diverse landscapes that shape the state, from the Canadian Shield to the fertile valleys. We've felt the chill of Minnesota's cold winters and the warmth of its summers. We've seen the strategic growth of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, and St. Paul, and peered into the unique geographic anomaly, the Northwest Angle. The reasons for the lower population density in the northern and western parts of the state are rooted in challenging geographic and climatic conditions. Yet, these areas are not empty. They are filled with a unique charm and untouched natural beauty. So there you have it, the reasons behind the unique population distribution in Minnesota. Remember to subscribe and like for more intriguing insights.